Hello and welcome to Kavisha Yes, Converting Possibilities into Reality. I am Ankita and as always I am going to be con continuing with the Sustainable Development Goal series. And in this session we are going to be talking about the SDG goal number 5 which talks about gender equality. Now as we know that all the SDGs are connected with each other which means that the development and improvement in one sustainable development goal automatically impacts the others. So uh, people who are new in this series they can watch the previous sessions which talks about the SDG goal number 1, 2, 3 and 4 in this channel only. In this session we are going to be talking about goal number 5 which talks about the gender equality. We are going to be discussing each and every details, all the nitty gritties about the gender equality situation in the, at the global level as well as in the Indian scenario. So without further ado, let's start. As we know that uh, the prevalence of gender disparities in our society in present time was not very similar in the ancient times. So we have seen that in the early Vedic period, women actually held very high social status. We have seen that in history lessons that women were often women were included in the samitis and vidathas these were socio political gatherings and which directly impacts that women were actually included in decision making process of the society. So in the ancient text of Vedas and Upanishads, they actually talk about the fact that women held great social status in previous times and were treated almost at par with men. But as the society started becoming more and more rigid, with the Vedic system uh, forming the caste systems and all of that. In the later Vedic system, we have seen that women discrimination and discrimination on the basis of gender, they started crawling up and, the, and gender disparities started emerging. And we have seen that there are social evils like the Parda system or the Dowry system and the Sati practice and various other systems for example, men were allowed to remarry, but uh, for women the same was not allowed. So these kind of discrimination started taking place in the society. And mainly this male dominated and patriarchal society is the most uh, important and uh, detrimental reasons why girl education and empowerment has been an age old issue now. So we see that the gender disparities have several consequences on multi-dimensional facets of women, be it women's health and nutrition or the child's health, missed education and employment opportunities, women's underdevelopment and most importantly, uh, you know, when a great section of the society, you know, in present times, women consist of 50% of the population, uh, even if I am considering Indian population, then just imagine if women are faced with underdevelopment, then this 50% of population is directly impacted. And uh, we have seen, we have grown up watching how women's health is one of the most neglected factors. We have seen in our, so in our families also that our mothers and all the female members of the family, they actually eat at the last. They wait for all the male members and the children to finish their eating. And the uh, senior women members, they eat at the last. And they do not also have enough food choices. They just eat the leftovers. So this is how a woman's health is directly impacted. And apart from that, of course, the child's health uh, is also impacted 
and of course uh, there is uh, absolutely no encouragement uh, regarding a woman having uh, pursuing higher education or getting the employment opportunities that they deserve so this directly directly results in underdevelopment and of course it's a great issue in the socio economic progress of the country we will see that the sdg 5 which talks about gender equality what it actually aims for so the aim of the sustainable development goal number 5 is to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls okay so it talks about absolute women empowerment and the sdg 5 actually talks about bringing in gender parity and to end the gender discrimination that is prevalent in our societies so we can see that the sdg 5 has actually nine targets and 14 indicators and there are several kinds of targets which vary from ending all forms of gender discriminations uh, and ending violence and exploitation of women and girls and only forced marriage you know this is one of the reason why the girls have to the girls have to face the girls face uh dropouts you know girls are often seen to be dropping out from school and higher education okay and uh, definitely they do not get the chance to attain basic employment so all these things are also apart from that there is you know such uh, uh social evils prevalent in the society like female genital mutilation and also several kind of sexual harassments you know these are obviously the direct threats towards uh, the gender uh, parity and of course there is uh, this issue of female participation in workforce and decision making which uh, greatly suffers due to gender discrimination so what happens is that women are barely politically and legally empowered so uh, it's a wholesome process and this sdg number 5 it actually wants to tackle all these multi dimensional scenarios when it comes to ensuring gender equality which is prevalent in the society we can uh, directly see that what is the scenario we will see that the gender snapshot report okay this is a gender snapshot report and uh, this report uh, gives a global global scenario of gender discrimination so this says that achieving gender equality will not be met by 2030 at the current pace of progress so at the global level also not just in the case of india but even at the global level also there is so much of gender inequality that is currently present okay that by 2030 which is the aim of the sdg 5 you know we know that all the sdgs all the sdgs have this uh, collective target to attain several uh, improvements that are targeted by the each and every sdgs they need to be implemented and uh, conquered by 2030 so the targets must be fulfilled by 2030 but the gender snapshot report says a completely different thing it says that at the current pace of progress that is happening at the global level it is impossible to reach the the uh, given target to fulfill the target by 2030 it also it is also predicted that the, at the current rate the world will take around 70 to 90 years 70 to 90 years right to achieve gender equality so we can imagine how uh, the gender discrimination is a uh, 
grave issue currently. We can also sometimes hear in the news that even in uh, the North America and the so-called Western societies, even the Hollywood actresses, they also claim that they do not have enough equal pay. Uh, so one can imagine that even in the Western so-called, the most, uh, uh, you know, improved societies, even they do not have uh, equal opportunities and equal payment when it comes to uh, equal pay. So we can understand that there is a lack of progress that is happening and the current rate of progress needs to be really accelerated. And apart from that, the COVID-19 pandemic has induced multidimensional disparities. Okay, disparities in every sector, be it social or political or economic or health. So in each and every aspect, several disparities have taken place and the actual disparities have heightened and women from the poorest of the classes and caste and war affected areas, they are the worst sufferers. When talking about India, we will definitely need to consider the gender gap report. The gender gap report where India ranks 135 out of 146 countries which directly states how grave of a situation Indian women have to face. The kind of inequality that is prevalent in Indian societies where India ranks terribly low, almost at the lowest bar of the all the countries. And we also have gender inequality index, which is, there is another, there is another index, which is known as gender inequality index, which is released by UNDP. And even in that, India ranks around 122. Okay, so one can imagine that India is, really lagging when it comes to this uh, important socio-economic situation and uh, so uh, there are like multi-dimensional uh, aspects when it comes to inequality, gender inequality in, in which women are lagging behind and the top three countries with the best gender parities are Iceland, Finland and Norway. So we can see that the concerning state of India and South Asian nations, they have worsened in the pandemic situation and uh, we can uh, witness that there are situations of child marriage and child trafficking, female child trafficking and displacements and higher rates of girl student dropouts where uh, the parents, uh, they can't afford uh, women or girl students ka, uh, education so women are or rather the girl students are faced to drop out okay and the girl students are many times in the pandemic they have lost either of their parents or both parents and they have they are forced to do labor work you know forced labor has also increased in the pandemic okay and uh, also, many kinds of other adversities have induced, for example, if you are talking about domestic violence, that has also increased. There was a report by UN Women, which talked about this phenomena called shadow pandemic. If you want, you can look into this uh, thing. So all the situations all together, they definitely affect women's development. Next, we will see what are the consequences of the gender inequalities. Now we know that, of course, one of the grave consequences of gender inequality is that women do not participate in uh, increasing the economy of the country. So we can see that there is absolutely low economic participation and labor participation. So women participation in labor force is as low as around 9.92% as compared to 67%. Just imagine the situation, 67%. This is a rural scenario. 
okay because this is a cmi report okay so this talks this this actually reflects the huge disparity that is present women participation is less than 10% and apart from that if i'm talking about urban participation then urban participation rate as released by the periodic labor force survey is also around 18.6% for women okay so women have actually very low around 18% of women participate this is a urban urban uh, survey so around 18% of women actually participate in labor force and also if you are talking about the unemployment rate unemployment rate for women for women that is also around 8% this is actually more as compared to 6% for men okay so the unemployment rate for women is also high next we will also see that there is this burden of underpaid work or rather unpaid work according to the ilo women spend around 4.1 times more time than men on unpaid domestic work the huge burden of domestic work that is almost 90% of domestic work 90% of domestic work burden is shared by women of course and 37% women take part in underpaid work so all these things you know because most women are also not even there is less amount of uh, self awareness okay there is less awareness when it comes to uh, women they don't even know that there are so many times when they do uh, underpaid work because also they are afraid that they might lose their job very easily as compared to a man then we will see that there are lesser chances of political empowerment you know a uh, women's participation in indian parliament is only close to 11% in some states like west bengal uh, bihar okay the rate is somewhat like 13% and 14% but uh, this is the national average so this is the situation so uh, because women participate very low in the political empowerment process which directly impacts that women actually take uh, the, the number of women in the indian parliament that is so low which means that women actually take very less participation in the decision making process so just imagine if women take so less part in the decision making process of course all the uh, situations that will be happening in societies you know there is nobody to represent the women side so this kind of a disparity is extremely prevalent so another grave consequence is that there is a huge impact on health and nutrition we know that a woman's health woman's health is directly uh, you know related to the child's health especially women who are pregnant pregnant or nursing women so one can imagine that how a woman or uh, when they do not get the kind of nutrition that they should that they deserve uh, women do not also get uh, access to medical health also their menstrual health sanitation all these aspects these are not covered these are not thought of especially in the orthodox families in the rural households so what happens 
is that the dispensaries and the hospitals and all the healthcare infrastructure these are so far away even in the rural situations the doctors there is also this uh, health infrastructural um, issue that happens which is why that even in the rural situation they do not get the adequate health care that is required adequate health care is often missing and women also have iron deficiencies almost one out of four women have iron deficiencies apart from that there are other deficiencies called micronutrient deficiencies there are nutrients like zinc calcium magnesium okay uh, also iron so these kind of nutrients they are known as micronutrients so when a woman neglect their health and food so of course uh, there are higher ch chances of uh, uh, disorders like anemia and others so one can imagine that uh, such a very difficult situation is prevalent in society apart from that of course the patriarchal mindsets this is the main uh, reason why so much of neglect is happening which is why there are everyday new issues of domestic violence and harassment abuse and also other crimes like rapes and murders and also are happening uh, in recent times we have seen extremely unfortunate situations happening even in today's times in uh, today's advancement situations also in the national capital or in other places of the country there are extremely unfortunate situations and incidents taking place so one can imagine that the kind of uh, disparity that is present now what one needs to know is that the constitutional and legal provisions that has been promised to us now uh, our constitution it definitely talks about equality we have seen that in the preamble they say that the promotion of social economic justice is valid for everyone and the provision for equal opportunities is also this is guaranteed by the constitution itself but the thing is even if these things are guaranteed by the constitution there is a lack in implementation and sometimes even when the policies are implemented they do not actually reach the uh, beneficiaries in the best or the most appropriate way anyway the other constitutional provisions that are there one can say that there is article 15 which prohibits the discrimination on the basis of sex or gender and apart from that we have the article 15 uh, clause 3 which empowers the state to make special provisions for women and children we can see that there are certain quotas for women reserved in certain jobs this is done by the government you know sometimes uh, there are uh, low cutoffs or you know sometimes the application form fill ups that are uh, required for the jobs government jobs they uh, say that the women candidates do not need to pay the fee that is for uh, every candidate okay so women have to pay less the application fee is low for them and sometimes the application fee is also nil for them so these kind of provisions have been made by the government under article 15 clause 3 apart from that we also have the sati prevention act and the dowry prevention act you know these are extreme social evils thankfully in present india these things have been tackled to a huge extent apart from that we have the prenatal diagnostic uh, technique methods you know we in india we have this situation that everybody wants a male child in their families so this desire for male child this is the reason why people in previous times used to conduct this sex detention 
six detention test where they uh, before the birth of the child they get to know the sex of the baby and if it's a girl child then the fetus is killed and this is known as the female feticide so to prevent the female feticides from happening this bill was passed the prenatal diagnostic uh, techniques so this is one of the uh, you know nicest measures that has been taken apart from that there is the protection of children from sexual offenses and also the prevention of sexual harassment acts at the workplace this is to prevent the sexual harassment cases at workplaces so these are some of the constitutional and legal provisions to ensure gender parity now we will see what are the government initiatives that were taken to ensure that equality is maintained first of all we have seen that the beti bachao beti padhao movement this was a revolutionary revolutionary movement when it was launched in 2015 to address the declining child sex ratio and ensure female child survival and protection of rights okay so this is a very important and a, a like magnanimous step towards the right direction apart from that we also have the mahila shakti kendra to encourage the rural women through community participation we also have the pm matru vandana yojana it provides cash incentives for improving the health and nutrition to pregnant and lactating mothers okay this this is a very important step towards ensuring uh, gender equality we also have the rashtriya mahila kosh which uh, is a direct step towards ensuring financial empowerment to women because this provides direct micro credit facilities to poor women to support their livelihood and to generate income activities so pm another thing is that the pm ujwala yojana this was to provide the clean cooking fuel because uh, the clean cooking fuel was something that uh, was uh, lacking in this sector and to improve their health okay so that uh, the clean fuel is is to be used and this was provided uh, by the government and this was the ujwala yojana and then apart from that we have the mahilai heart and mahilai heart is a all female digital marketing platform for women and this is a online thing apart from that we also have political reservation which is guaranteed by the government not the government actually the constitution by uh, by in introducing the article 243d of the constitution there was 33% reservation secured for women in the panchayati raj institution this was to promote political empowerment now we will see that what is the way forward because as we can see that even though all the policies are being implemented but still the gender disparities remain and uh, we can see from the indexes how uh, a women do not have the adequate income per capita 